Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. This is a really interesting story. So about 15 years ago, the discovery of a six inch mummified skeleton from Northern Chile's Atacama Desert led to widespread speculation about its origins because, well, it's six inches. And the bone of contention was whether the skeletal remains were that of an alien, an unrecognized primate species, or a human fetus. Because if you're just looking at this, there's definitely something really strange about it. The mummified skeleton was found when an immature collector by the name of Oscar Munoz chanced upon a leather pouch containing a white cloth. This was when he was exploring La Noria, a deserted nitrate mining town in Chile's Atacama region. When he unwrapped the cloth, Oscar uncovered a skeleton, hence named as Ata after the site of his finding. Now, the presumption of Ata being an alien continued for many years until recently when a genomic analysis shed new light on his ancestry. Now, just looking at this, I, I mean, I, I, I think I would have guessed alien because with a height of about six inches, Ata's diminutive frame really stood out. Despite its tiny size, the skeleton was fully formed with matured features. It exhibited hardened teeth, an elongated and angular skull, pronounced oval and slanted eye sockets, and 10 pairs of ribs as opposed to the standard 12 pairs of an adult human. The skeleton was estimated to be around 40 years old, and preliminary attempts to date its bone age led to the conclusion that the specimen was that of a young child, aged no more than 6 or 8 years. In looking at it, it's really no surprise that since Ata on Earthing in 2003, the probability of the Atacama humanoid being an alien has been rife, more so because of a 2013 UFO documentary titled Sirius, which fueled the conjecture. In this documentary, American ufologist Stephen M. Greer attempted to demystify the origin of Ata and speculated that the mummy had its genesis in extraterrestrials. So intrigued by the mystery surrounding Ata's origins, Gary P. Nolan, a professor of microbiology and immunology at Stanford University, decided to conduct an in-depth analysis of the skeleton's well-preserved DNA by extracting a sample from the bone marrow of Atta's ribs. Accordingly, necessary permissions were sought from the skeleton's present Ramon Navia Osorio, who eventually bought Atta from Oscar Munoz and treasured it in a private collection in Spain. The genetic study of the skeleton made some startling revelations, which indicated that not only was Atta a human female, but she was probably of Chilean descent, with the likelihood of her parallel lineage to European ancestry not not being ruled out either. Moreover, the whole genome sequence analysis divulged that Atta had a rare bone aging disorder triggered by multiple mutations in the genes associated with bone development. This premature aging disease gave rise to the false impression of her being much older than she truly was. The extent of the skeleton's genetic defects and its tiny size further suggest a probable cause of miscarriage or the possibility that the skeletal remains belong to a premature born human fetus or a stillborn baby. So if this is true, what exactly was the nature of Atta's bone disease that led to the accelerated aging of her bones and her bizarre appearance? Well, DNA analysis attributes Atta's deformed form to the 64 mutations in the seven genes related to the development of the skeletal system. These genetic mutations are thought to be the cause behind the anomalous specimen's various and musculoskeletal abnormalities, ranging from dwarfism and rib count oddity to scoliosis. Also, a series of mutations occurred in several other genes, including those linked to collagen production. According to Dr. Atta Boot, a senior author of the study conducted on Atta's DNA sample, the rarity of the skeleton's mutations makes it really hard to believe that Atta's disorder was hereditary. Rather, he presumes that environmental factors had a role to play in Atta's genetic mutations. The fact that the skeletal remains were discovered in a mining town with abandoned nitrate mines gives rise to the likelihood of DNA damage owing to the child being exposed to chemicals from nitrate mining early on in her development stage. Now, although Atta is confirmed not to be an alien, but her case is really fascinating for researchers because it is really rare to come across such a high number of mutations in a single specimen, and, and that some of her genetic alterations have been virtually unheard of or unknown to science until their chance finding in Atta's DNA. Also, researchers believe that these invaluable findings, coupled with the tools and technology used to unearth them, can play a crucial role in the accurate and prompt diagnosis and treatment of genetic mutations related cases in patients in the days to come. So although just looking at the picture, it, it did seem like something was really strange here. And it was a lot of strange and rare conditions to cause Atta to, to, to turn out the way she did. And even though Atta is not of alien origin, it still proves that there's so much we don't know about the human body, so much there's still to be discovered about us right here. Anyway, really, really interesting story I wanted to share with you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. See you later.